Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for today's video. I'm not really sure what we're doing, but I have an exciting package. Well, I bought some stuff from Nomad Cosmetics, so I'm trying a new indie brand and it's a very fall themed, which you'll see. And I think you can see from this cute way it was packaged, there's a little pumpkin here. So I'll show you what's in there. But I thought I would do like a shop my stash, get ready with me kind of video. Um, Cause I'm taking advantage of there actually being sunlight today and I have time to film. So yeah, I think we'll just get into it. I have absolutely nothing on my face. I just like did some micellar water cause I was too lazy to do my skincare. So yeah. Let's just get into it. Um, so the first thing, it, this is actually in my deck of panning, right? I get confused. I don't know how people have like multiple project pans going on because I only have two and I'm already lost. <laughs> so yeah, this is in my deck of panning for oldest product i don't remember but anyway it's the vdl lumi layer primer fresh so i have been using this i use two pumps at a time but i thought today since i have another product in my deck of panning that i am never reaching for the junk elephant umber tint physical daily defense i thought what if i mix these two and that's how i would get use out of this one so we're gonna try that. I have no idea if it's gonna work, but it doesn't really matter. So, cause I'm not going anywhere, at least right now. Um, so I'm gonna do just one pump of this, but normally I do two, but since I'm gonna mix it, so that's one pump. And then I'm gonna take some of this and put a bit of that in. So that's what it looks like before I mix it up. These are both like glowy finish kind of products. So we'll see what happens. It does, it looks kind of weird right now. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Because the Drunk Elephant um, Umber Tint, like the name suggests, it has a tint to it, but it's not like a tinted moisturizer or anything. It's just a tint so that you don't have like a white cast from the SPF. At least that's how I interpret that because there's no coverage or anything on it. So I use it um, usually as a primer or just on its own, but I haven't been reaching for it. so. Maybe this way, I'll actually use it. Cause my goal is to use that up. It is expired. So it just needs to be out of my collection. So that actually looks pretty good so far. I think mixing it with this made it, made the umber tint less, I don't want to say greasy, but it kind of is. It has like a, I don't know, a greasy texture, which is good for me because I have dry skin, but I don't know how you'd feel if you had oily skin with that product. The foundation in my Shop My Stash is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Dewy, and I think I've lost my tan enough by this point <laughs> that this shade will work for me. If not, we'll just have to bronze it up but um, this is the shade Soft Ivory. Maybe I should shake this. Yeah, shake well before use. So this is like a paddle type applicator. So I just kind of swipe it on. I don't know how hygienic that is, but whatever. Let's just start with that amount. See the issue with this kind of packaging is if you don't pay attention, you're gonna get it everywhere and that bugs me <laughs> so I'm just gonna clean that off and I'm gonna use my sponge to blend this out 
Actually, that shade is not bad. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I think if I would have tried this on, like in August, it would have been a no-go, but now that it's October, it's fine. And this is not a first impression. I actually really like this foundation. I've tried it multiple times before. So I'd say with that amount that I used, it's a light coverage, but you could build it up um, if you wanted to. I just don't like the look of a lot of product. Well, I mean, who likes the look of a lot of product on their skin? But I don't like a fuller coverage on me personally. But I do have some redness that I want to cover, so I'm going to do a bit of spot concealing also. But that's how that's looking. So I've never tried this foundation with that mixture, obviously, because that was the first time I tried that mixture. So we'll see how it wears, but it looks okay right now. And you can still see, like, a bit of glow on my skin, which I like. And that is the dewy version of the photo focus, so it's supposed to be like that. So for spot concealing, I actually pulled in the item beauty, right? The Air Hug Concealer, Addison Rae's brand. I got this in a boxy charm, and when I pulled this into my shop, my stash randomly, I was like, oh, that looks like a a good shade. Um, this is like white and I cannot use this on my face because it's very very light. It's the shade 100 which might be like one of the lightest shades they have. Um, it looks like this. So I tried it under my eyes and I don't know if I like it. I think it's too glowy. That's not the word I want, but I don't know how else to say it. It makes my under eyes look like radiant, like after time even, not just like when I first apply it. So it doesn't look the best and it's not very much coverage. I don't know, but I have only used it like twice and I use a very small amount. So maybe you're supposed to use more, whatever, I don't know. So I'm not going to use that for spot concealing, so I had to pull in another concealer so I went back to my Born This Way multi-use sculpting concealer in the shade Pearl so this one is a much better match for my like skin on my face um, and I really like this concealer so I'm gonna use this one and I don't use a lot of this because it is higher coverage for what I normally wear and I don't want it to look obvious like where the concealer is versus the you know foundation normally when i spot conceal i use my rare beauty concealer brush but i think i'm just gonna use the sponge today um, because i don't want it to be too too much coverage for my under eye concealer i'm gonna use my tarte because this is a product it's not in a project officially but I've been trying to pan this since last year <laughs> and I still have it kicking around and mostly it's because when I use concealer this is how much I use I do one dot here one here one here and one here and that's it so that's why this is still you know not done because I just don't use it too much and I can't use that concealer as a spot concealer because it's too, it's like a watery texture if you can see that and it's also too light, the shade, so yeah. <laughs> I actually like this concealer but I find it's iffy, like it doesn't work with every foundation so when I use it, well, which is pretty much every time I do my makeup. That's why I don't bring my foundation up under my eyes because I don't want the two textures to mesh and like cause any issues. Like with this one right now, it's looking a little weird. So 
And I would probably not buy a like water-based concealer ever again <laughs> for that reason because it's just like too much thought like you have to think like oh this is gonna work today with this one or not it's like I just want a concealer that works you know so besides I don't even think that aqua sealer from Tarte exists anymore I think it's still on their website but it's not at Sephora so I'm not sure if it's like discontinued I think I think it is so that's it for the base well, I mean the complexion, you know. I am looking a little pale probably, so we'll have to give some color back to the skin. But I think what I want to do now, oh, there's a windstorm. I think we'll go to the eyes. And then depending on how the look turns out, then I'll know like what blush and stuff to use. I need a sip of coffee first. <laughs> this is my spice season mug from Anthropology. I love it. So first I'm going in with my Urban Decay Primer Potion as usual. So prim eyeshadow primers are not things that excite me <laughs> in makeup. Like I don't feel the need to try different ones or have multiples in my collection so I actually only have this one and one that I got in a boxy charm but it has like a tint to it but I kind of would rather finish that one and then move on to that one because this one is older anyway and but that might be like another year before that's done so yeah I'm not going to be buying any eyeshadow primers anytime soon. Okay, so back to this package from Nomad Cosmetics. I love how it's done. So this is a brand from, I think they're based in Texas, but their whole like vibe is that they make eyeshadow palettes based on places that they've actually been to. And when they're at those places, they design the color story and everything, but their lab is in China. So that's just like a little background on this, but this came beautifully packaged. Like, so this was, this is the product packaging, but this was in like a bubble, like not even bubble wrap, like biodegradable, like netting. And then that was in another recyclable, envelope package so it was just really well done it came super quickly considering it's not like in Canada um, so yeah I'm very happy with that part of the brand so far so I would definitely buy from them again the only thing is the shipping to Canada is $20 which and that doesn't include like customs or duties but I didn't get charged anything on this and I've been trying to understand like why sometimes I get charged and sometimes I don't and I think it's because this is something I saw on reddit so I don't know <laughs> how true it is but someone was saying like in Canada you only get charged customs if the value of the product you're bringing in is 200 or more I could be totally wrong on that. Like I said, I'm just saying something I saw on Reddit, which I might have like misinterpreted also, but I think that's why. So I did pay $20 for shipping, but I didn't have to pay anything extra, which I like. Assuming I'm not going to get a bill later on. <laughs> I don't think so though, because this came from USPS to Canada Post and then Canada Post delivered it so I think they would have like left me a note at the door if I had to pay something extra. Anyway, long story, I know, but that's very like important to me when I try new brands as someone that lives in Canada so I thought I would just share that information with you because I know a lot of us makeup lovers want to try more indie brands but sometimes it's like the price is just too crazy but anyway so this is my cute package very fall themed and it opens like unfolds like this and 
this is what was inside. Another bubble wrap because I actually bought two eyeshadow palettes from Nomad. And it came with, okay, it came with this first. So a little explanation about the brand, which I love. It feels very like I bought this on Etsy kind of thing, <laughs> which I like. So, it, and I'll just read a bit of it. It's actually, so these are the Nomad co-founders, Felicia and Auntie. That's them there, very cute. So it just explains what I was saying before that they, you know, make their products inspired by places that they actually visit. And they've like visited many countries around the world. Um, so each Nomad product is designed on location and infused with locally inspired ingredients. And they create high performance cosmetics with formulas that have no parabens, phthalates, mineral oil, and they're cruelty free and vegan. So I love that. And this is just an example of other palettes that they have here. I think my camera is not focusing. Yeah, it's not gonna focus, I guess, but they're just different places around the world, like Iceland, Tokyo, so and so. So I did get their newest release, of course, the Nomad Hudson Valley palette. Look at this. This is so fun right now because when I look at this window, it kind of looks like this outside. So this, even though Hudson Valley is in New York, this reminds me of where I live too. So very cool. Um, and it's nice, like kind of feels like craft paper. And it came with a little postcard, which was so cute. The Hudson Valley, I'm gonna keep this. And this is like written by hand. So I'm just like very impressed. I mean this part. So thanks so much Felicia and Auntie and they wrote my name. I think that's so cute. And it just says thank you so much for your order. We hope you'll love your new Nomad goodies. Enjoy. And there's a little I love New York thing. I just love this. So like I said this is the palette. It has the shade names the colors and the names on the back here. And it says Hudson Valley, New York. Okay, so the destination is Hudson Valley, New York. The coordinates are the foliage trail. And the inspiration is falling in love with fall. This is called an intense color palette. So the inside actually feels and looks exactly like the box packaging, which I also like. So that's how it looks there. And when you open it, there's a little paper. Everything is very like eco-friendly and recyclable. And this is the color story. So I think everyone already did a video on this because they got it in PR. Um, so you've probably seen this before but if you haven't, this is what it looks like and I love it. So this palette actually only has three shimmers. They're the ones down the middle here, but I really like that because if you guys are new here, I like to build my eyeshadow looks with mattes and then I just put like a shimmer on the lid normally. And look at these mattes here. They're so, like these colors are so unique to my collection. And then these are not so much because they're like, you know, warm tones, which I love, but still very pretty. Love this mustardy yellow and the shimmers just look beautiful. So um, let me just show you more closely how cute this is. Even though my camera does not ever want to focus anymore because <laughs> I think I touched something. But this one has pumpkins in it. This one has a little apple barrel. This one has cider. So it's just like super cute and fall themed. I love it. So this is the one I'm gonna use today, but I'll show you the other palette that I bought. <laughs> so this one I bought because it was on sale. It was 25% off and it just fits 
the whole vibe of the season we're in right now. It's the Haunted Europe palette. This one I've been wanting for a while, but I didn't want to just buy one thing and pay that much shipping, you know? <laughs> so, and since it was on sale, I just dove in. So look at this packaging. It's one of those like shifting things. So very creepy and cool. And the inside looks like this. I love it. So this one has obviously a lot more shimmers than the other one. More like, you know, just spread out everywhere. And when I look at this, I see like three distinctive color stories. So you have like your purples and pinks here, green and blue, and your orange and yellow and brown kind of thing. Anyway, that's how my eye looks at this and I love that for me because I love to be able to look at a palette and just visualize a look. And you can even go in the rows, like this is a look, this is a look, you know? I love that. So I haven't tried, like this is my first time that I'm ever gonna play with the shadows, but I've heard really great things about Nomad Cosmetics and Tara Babies, who is someone I watch every week because she does a, like a huge haul video every Saturday. Um, she mentioned recently that this is one of her favorite palettes in her entire collection. And if you don't know Tara Baby, she I think has like every single piece of makeup that ever existed. <laughs> she just has like a museum of makeup in her beauty room it seems. So that's saying a lot if this is her favorite one. So I'm very excited about this, but I don't think it's, yeah, I'm not gonna use this one today. But if you guys are interested, I could do like a separate video just on this. I just wasn't sure like if anyone cared because this is a quite old palette in Nomad universe. It's one of their older um, palettes. So I don't know if anyone wants to see that, but if you do, just let me know because I definitely want to use this soon anyway because it's fitting the like Halloween spooky season vibes that I love but yeah I just wanted to show you that I also got that palette so what do I want to do I just did a red like a warm red look in my Harry Potter video so I'm gonna try and do something different today but I definitely want to use one of those shimmers should I try and do like a grungy green look? I think so. I'm just gonna go in first with a big fluffy brush into the shade Ghost Tour. So I'll just try and show you. I don't know if you can see that. There's like a headless horseman on there. <laughs> so cute. So this is like just a light kind of I don't know, taupe shade, I guess. And I want to put that as my starting shade. So I don't know how well this is going to show up on my skin tone. But yeah, I think it's creating like a bit of a shadow. So this is a shade like I would probably use at the end too to like buff out the edges of my look. Right off the bat I would say um, there is kick up in the pan but I usually like when I see that because that means it's a formula that's probably going to blend easily at least from what I've seen in the past. So yeah I mean that didn't do much but I like to just put like a shadow down as a base first. I think I want to go in with Farmer's Market. This one here that has little vegetables in it. It's like kind of like a sagey green, I guess. I'm using a smaller brush now because I don't want that to go everywhere. So far, everything's blending super nicely. And I think on the outer corner, 
I just want to go in with Mountain Hike first, which is like a deeper green here. The shades in this palette are so unique, like I'm not even sure how to <laughs> describe them. Like I said, the previous one was like a sage green, but maybe this one is more like a sage. The other one was more like a gray green. I don't even know if that makes sense, but so I'm kind of just like packing that on the outer corner, but very lightly. I don't like to pack on tons of color when I'm doing my looks. I like to build them slowly. So I think I'm gonna go in with the shimmer and then go back and like probably deepen it up a bit more. But I, I'm looking at the green shimmer, of course, called Corn Maze. It looks beautiful. So, usually when I try a new shimmer formula, I like to start with a brush because I'm just curious how it's gonna apply with a brush because it gives me a better idea of how the formula is. So it picks up well. Oh yeah, so this is one that you can definitely apply with a brush, which I like. I don't always like to use my fingers but with some formulas, you kind of have to or else you are not going to get anything on your lid. But this one definitely works with the brush, which I really like. So yeah, that was pretty pigmented, so I definitely need to go and deepen up the mattes again. So I'm going back into Mountain Hike, which was the, the darker green here. And back into the lighter kind of green, Farmer's Market. And back into Ghost Tour, just for light to blend the top. Okay, this is exactly what I wanted it to be. Like a grungy, swampy green <laughs> look. I, really like it. I'm just thinking, do I want to put some of leaf peeping on the center? But it's more like an orangey yellow. Let's just see what happens. So I'm going to just put it with my finger this time because I do just want it on the center. Yeah, I think that's just adding some more brightness on the lid. I might actually use that as my inner corner shape too because it is actually the lightest shimmer in the palette, this one. So, yes. But I think I'll do the lower lash line before that. So I'm gonna go in. What do I wanna do? Yeah, I think we're gonna stick to the green tones. So I'm gonna go back into Farmer's Market. Okay, and then just to deepen up the corner again, back with Mountain Hike. So I'm basically just doing what I did on the upper lash, no, upper lid. <laughs> kind of smoking it out. And blending it back into the corner here. And I actually might take the shimmer the green shimmer corn maze and I'm actually going to put that in the the center I'm very surprised at how well the shimmers go on with the brush because in the pan they look very like they're going to be very wet but they're not that kind of formula like the kind that you have to use your finger to like really press and 
tug on, you know? So I really like these so far. And all the colors look on the lid like they do in the pan, which is another plus. So like I said, I'm gonna go back to leaf peeping and put that on my inner corner. I find myself trying to put my brush not in the little embossings because I don't want to ruin them. <laughs> but eventually I'll have to. And I'm kind of bringing that down into the green shimmer. And the excess I'll put on my brow bone. I'm just wondering if I should deepen up the outer corner even more because there's these two shades which look really fun. But I don't know if I want to go there. I like how it is right now. Yeah, I think that's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to do the same on this eye and then I'll be back to do the rest of my makeup. I'm back. I did the other eye and then I was about to like keep doing the rest of my makeup but I forgot I was kind of doing like a shot my stash also. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you how it looks um, closer up. So I really like it how it is. I obviously went in with like a light hand. Um, I feel like you could build these mats up a lot more than I did, but I don't really wear like super dark dramatic looks. So this is how I would use the palette anyway on like a daily basis. So I'm very happy with it. I love the shimmers. Um, and I only had like a tiny bit of fallout on this side, but it's not even bad at all. So yeah, I am happy I can use the shimmers with a brush and that they don't just like fly all over. So yeah, let me just zoom you back out so we can finish the rest. Oh, and I put my Tarte um, Nude Eyeliner on my waterline because I felt like my eyes looked a bit red and it just kind of brightened them some more. So what do, what do I do now? <laughs> For mascara, my Charlotte Tilbury um, Dream Pop mascara would look cool with this. It's a berry brown shade, but I think I want to do just a black mascara today. Um, because my eyes aren't looking super red and it's annoying me. So this is the Anastasia Lash Brag. It's just one that I have open and I actually, I like it. So I'm using it up. It's just a little mini that came in, I think a Sephora Favorites set. And I like this one because it lengthens and volumizes but it's not too like clumpy or anything the brush is a little large like this itself so i don't love it for my lower lashes usually for my lower lash i switch to the other mascara that i have open the bad gal bang from benefit so this one I opened because it's older in my collection and I liked the shape of the wand for my lower lash line because it it's skinny and comes to a point. So that's why I have this one open. <laughs> you guys might know, like if you saw my other videos, I rarely actually buy mascara. I just keep getting them in BoxyCharms or in... So for a favorite set, so I just use what I have basically and I try to use the oldest ones first, although I haven't been really good at that because I was just way too excited to open my Charlotte Tilbury one <laughs> and that's an older one in my collection, so. So that's the look with the mascara. I mean, this lighting is terrible as usual, but I really like it. I feel like in person it's brighter and more like yellow green, but on camera it's duller. <laughs> but I think it looks really nice in person and I would totally wear this look 
out like without being like oh I'm wearing green eyeshadow like no I like it a lot okay so I guess I will do my let's do highlighter and blush and bronzer before brows because I like to put my highlighter like into my brow area so I like to do them after that step I have like a lot of highlighter options in my shop my stash because I have this NARS narcissist palette I am loving this and I'm so sad that I basically forgot that I owned it <laughs> because it's beautiful it looks like this there is a highlighter in this palette and I love it and I love all the shades of the blush um yeah but I don't know if this goes with my look today maybe this neutral one which is buzzed but um yeah so I wanted to mention that one because this is like a reinvigorated favorite in my collection um and then I also have this MAC Star Dipped face compact in the light this one it looks beautiful I love the stars and everything but these are so hard pressed and I don't feel like I have a brush in my collection that works best with this formula I've heard that with this type of thing you would need like a natural hair brush and I don't own any natural hair brushes Mine are all like synthetic, so yeah, I love this, the look of this and I love the shades, but it's just hard to get onto my face. <laughs> so that's an option. I don't know. Maybe not though. Because this highlighter has like a pink shift to it and this white one kind of has a pink in it also. If you can see that there. So maybe not this but this blush looks really pretty for fall they do have names that so the blushes are dipped in stars and sipping on stars and the highlighter is show gold and high sequency but those sound like those shades are not existing outside of that palette so i don't know you can't get this anymore because it was from holiday like three years ago I don't, I don't even know um then i had this ofra on the glow palette because i pulled this in for the bronzer i believe for california dream but then there's all of these other options i like the look of this americano bronzer what was I even looking for right now? I thought I was talking about highlighter. <laughs> I'm getting distracted. What should I do first though? Let's do bronzer first. I don't know why I went to highlighter because normally I don't put my highlighter on before my blush and bronzer. I really wanna try this Americano bronzer. I like to use this brush lately. I started using it because it fit in the pans of the complex culture face quad that I had in my lash at my stash but now I just grew to like it a lot for bronzer it's a moda like a royal and lime nickel moda brush but it doesn't have a number but it's fun so I'm going in with this shimmery americano bronzer this would be something probably better for summer but I just like how it looks and I have never used it until now, so <laughs> let's see. Oh, yes, it's quite warm on my skin tone, but not in a bad way. I feel like I kind of needed some warmth in my skin anyway because that Wet n Wild foundation, especially on camera, looks very white. Not white, but... <laughs> It makes me look quite pale, so let's put some color back in. This is, it seems like very pigmented, yeah. It's a very pigmented bronzer. 
So I didn't need to go in with that much. Yeah, I definitely feel like there's more <laughs> color in my face now, but that really blended out very nicely. I was a little worried at first that it was too warm, but I think it's nice. And then we'll just go to blush, I think. Uh, I already put powder on, but I had this cream, lip and cheek cream palette from Primrose. No, this is the Primrose and Cream lip and cheek cream palette from <laughs> Seraphine Botanicals. I got this in a boxy charm. I have used this shade already as you can tell, and I really liked it. I'm not sure if it lasted very long, but that's something I feel happens with most cream blushes because I don't set them down normally. Um, but yeah, these are beautiful fall shades as well. I do really like this shade with the green, but I've used it already. I'm trying to get more use out of my collection. And then there's the blush in my deck of panning, the Hourglass Mood Exposure, which would also be nice. Maybe I'll just use this one to get another use <laughs> out of this. Yeah, because I feel like this pretty much goes with everything. And it is a blush I like to use when the weather starts changing, when it gets colder out. So let's do this one. I almost bought the Hourglass face palette that just came out for holiday, but I talked myself out of it. I literally had it in my hand, like in the store. And I just couldn't do it. First of all, it's like $107 Canadian or something like that. And I just don't think I use enough of the kind of products that Hourglass releases to justify that purchase. Like I'm, I don't use the powders and the glow things. I don't even know what they're called. Like, yes, I really like the blush formula, but do I need an $107 palette? Probably not. <laughs> and I was gonna get the Tiger palette, which is the one that's meant for deeper skin tone, because I was like, oh, I'll use that, the finishing powder as a bronzer, but like, why? <laughs> I don't need any more bronzers. I don't know. But if it went on sale, I don't know, I might, think about it again. What do you guys think? Try and please tell me I don't need it because I definitely don't. <laughs> but if you guys bought it and you really love it, I would also like to know. And which, which one did you get? Because I hope you guys know what I'm talking about, but there's like the tiger one, the elephant one, and the butterfly one, and it's meant to be for like light, medium, and deep. But I kind of feel like they made it so that you would either buy all of them or more than one because you could really use them in different ways. But yeah, if you guys purchased any of those, which one did you get? I was thinking of doing like a, an anti-haul of the holiday sets at Sephora because a lot of them like are intriguing me. But when I think about it, like, I definitely don't need them. So I don't know. If you guys are interested in something like that, I can do that video too. But that's the blush. I feel like whenever I put this blush on, it ends up looking more rosy than I think it would. Because in the pan, it looks very mauve. But once you swirl it all together, it's more like a rosewood on me anyway. But I really like that. I have to remember to track that because I'm not doing well at tracking things. So that's the blush and the highlighter. I had this in my Shop My Stash, the Tower 28 Bronzino in Suncoast, which is supposed to be a bronzer, but it's extremely light. And I don't feel like it's very pigmented. Like I feel like this is something 
you would use on a no makeup makeup day as like your one and done like this would be your blush bronzer and highlighter like you would kind of apply it in this whole area but I need to use this some more to see if I like it but I not with this look I don't think do I have a highlighter in my shop in my deck of panning no I think for highlighter we're gonna go back into the Ofra palette so there it is one, two, three, three highlighters. This one, Blissful, this one, Beverly Hills, and this Rodeo Drive. I've used these two before because I had them in singles, but now I have this whole palette, so I gave those singles to my mom. Um, and I do really like the Ofra highlighter formula. But I'm kind of looking at this blissful shade, which I've never tried. And I think that's like neutral enough to use with this look. So let's do that one. I'm going to use a fan brush because I don't want to pick up too much of this because the Ofra highlighters can get very blinding. Really. Yeah, so this is why I like to do my brows after because I kind of I blend my highlighter into my brow here and then I bring it up so It's best that I do that first Yeah, so even with a light hand and a flimsy fan brush This is very Blinding But I like it. It looks smooth on the face is this causing a cast? I'm not sure. Because it is like kind of a deeper highlighter maybe. I'm not even... I don't know. Maybe not. I like to put this thing back on because it has the names. And otherwise I guess you'd have to take them out of the palette. Um, but yeah. I got this in a boxy charm, if I didn't say already, and it's very like heavy and I feel like probably expensive because it has six like full size pans of products that I'm pretty sure you can buy separately. So yeah, this was a great thing to get in my box. I think I'm going to spray my face first before we continue. So the setting spray in my shot my stash is the half magic do lock i've been liking this i just wish the packaging was different like i kind of want to know how much is in here but it's opaque so you can't tell and it feels like that like hairspray can kind of thing but it's not an aerosol spray it's just like a regular spray and you have to hold it quite far from yourself because it's quite like, it's a wet spray, but I really like it. It's called the Hydrating Set and Refresh, so you can use it like throughout the day just to like revive yourself. I'm not sure if you would like this if you have very oily skin, because I feel like it is very dewy, and that's the point of it, like it's called Dew Lock, so yeah. But I bought this from the Half Magic site when they launched um, yeah, I, I like it. I just wish it had clear packaging, but that's maybe just like my project pen side <laughs> coming out. So for my brows, I've been doing, well, usually I just do two things. I do the Essence Make Me Brow, which honestly is empty. I just, I keep using it because I see that there's product in here. But I think there's no more of like the fiber part of it. So we'll see after this use. Because even last time I used it, I was like, okay, I think that's done. Um, and then I go in with the Kosas Clear Brow Gel, which I've really been liking. But I also pulled in the Kosas Brow Pop Dual Action Defining Pencil into my shop my stash. So I'm going to use this too. I have used it two or three times already and I like it. 
it's a nice color it's not too dark and it's very waxy so you don't have to like worry about it going all over the place um, but yeah so I don't know if... so even when I put this in my brow I can see a difference right but I just feel like it's not doing much anymore and it feels quite dry <laughs> But again, it's not something I can see into, so I don't know how much is there or not. And I did actually try to pull the stopper out, but it wouldn't come out, and then I didn't want to break it, so I gave up on that. But, like, it's adding color, but I don't feel like it's making fibers. I don't know, but every time I use it, I like it, and then I'm like... I'm just gonna keep it. So I guess it'll be around till there's literally nothing left in there. Um, and then normally I would go in with the gel. Well, first I wait a bit for that to like settle and then I go in with the gel. But let's do the pencil. So this is like one of those teardrop shape pencils, but it's very small and I like that. So I usually like get a bit out like this and I use the corner for the front. I hope you can't hear all the noise in the background because Josh has a friend over and they're like screaming <laughs> for some reason. So yeah, if you could hear that this whole time, I'm very sorry. So yeah, I just do like the front and then I kind of put it on its side, the teardrop and blend it in just to like fill the sparse areas. And it kind of ends up looking like that. But then I go back in with, I love this pencil for the spoolie. It has a really good spoolie. And then I comb that again to like bring them back up sort of thing but I think that's a perfect shade um I didn't even tell you what shade it is medium brown and I think the reason I bought this I well I bought these this the pencil and the air brow in like one kit and I believe it was described as a cool tone brown or maybe it was neutral and that's why I bought it because I was like okay that's what I need because I really don't like warm tones in my brows so yeah that now I, I would go in with the gel to like set everything and this is not like a very hard like crispy gel it's very nice and I love the, the brush because it's kind of like a triangle and I really like that. And I feel like with this pencil, I don't have to be super careful and I really like that because I hate like having to actually do my brow. I don't want to be doing like a full brow routine, <laughs> like I don't care enough about them. So this is just super easy for me so of course with this packaging because it's clear it starts to look pretty disgusting because you're gonna get like your other brow product into the formula unless you are only using a gel but most people I think use at least two products to do their brows but yeah I just love how they're natural and even though there's gel in them and you can see that the gel helped to lift them, it doesn't look like there's gel in them when you look at me. So, very happy with my current brow routine. I was hoping to get this Essence Made Me Brow out so that I could be using all three of the Kosas products at once, but there's just, this is still just kicking. So, yeah. This is another product like unofficially like another product I'm trying to pen unofficially like it's not in a project like the Tarte concealer so that's that is that everything? oh well no <laughs> lip product for lip products 
I've been trying a lot of different things because I actually started like a side project that I'm I haven't done a video on have I no so I did a video on my palettes on the chopping block and I think I said in that video I wanted to do the same kind of thing for lip products so I actually did start that like on my own so I have a box of products aside and I've kind of been pulling them randomly to see if I like them and so far I've liked them so I haven't <laughs> gotten rid of anything but yeah what have I tried so well this one is not in that project but this is the Too Faced Melted Matte in Pumpkin Spice so this is actually in my Shop My Stash um, I love this one I love the Melted Matte formula. It's just really working well for me. For, for it being a liquid lipstick that dries down, it's not horrible. I've also loved this NARS Afterglow Lip Balm in Laguna. That's a good one. My Tower 28 Almond Gloss is really nice. I did try my Hocus Pocus. Um, Tonight We Fly Fresh Kiss Lip Cream. This is from the Hocus Pocus collection last year. And this I didn't like so much. It's a very, very dark purple shade, but it's hard to apply because it's a cream lip product and it doesn't dry down. So it kind of like the pigment just kind of moves around when you're trying to apply it. And then it kind of goes everywhere. So not my favorite formula for this kind of shade. And then in my deck of panning, I have a red lipstick, which I'm definitely not going to wear right now because it's no, not going to go with this look. Maybe this would be nice or is it too bright? This is half caked low key. So liquid lipstick in the shade low key. Oh yeah, mm. maybe this, so these, this is a product in that project. And I also have this mini MAC lipstick in Rebel, but I don't want a purple lip. Okay, let's try this one because I don't know how I feel about this formula. I don't, I might have tried, because I got these in a three pack and I might have tried another one like a different shade maybe once but i don't remember anything about it so let's do <laughs> this one but i will need a lip liner okay just watched a bunch of lip liners um i think i'm gonna go with this one this is the aveda lip liner in tarragona it's like in the same color family but deeper that's the lip liner and that's the liquid lipstick. So let's do this one. Ooh, I forgot how soft the Aveda lip liners are. Okay, there's the lip liner. And then let's try this. This is one of those liquid lipstick formulas that's super like uh, thin and liquidy as opposed to moussey. So if that tells you anything. I love the pigmentation on this. It is a little brighter than I wanted for this look, for a fall look, but I think, I think it's okay. Oh yeah, it's already drying down. But it doesn't feel like sticky. Like some liquid lipsticks, when you do this, it like you have to like unstick your mouth. But no, so far I like this one. Okay, so I'd have to see how it wears throughout the day to get like a full review. Oh, but even that swatch like is not coming off my hand, so. That should tell you something. I think this video has been long enough. <laughs> this is why I don't normally do like a full face on camera because it's such a long video and I just 
start rambling. So, but I do, I like long videos personally, so maybe you do also. But hopefully I can edit down <laughs> most of this. So yeah, I hope you like this video. Let me know again if you want to see a look with the Haunted Europe palette. Um, and what else did I say? Something before, I don't, I don't remember. Oh, the anti-haul video. Let me know if you want to see those below. And yeah, if you like this video, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!